Hello, my name is Morgan Petronelli, Associate Editor with Dermatology Times. And today we're speaking with Dr. Linda Steingold, Director of Dermatology Clinical Research at Henry Fourth Health System in Detroit, Michigan. And we're gonna be speaking about oral antibiotics for acne, as well as novel narrow-spectrum antibiotics for acne. You know, so my first question is, what are narrow spectrum antibiotics and how do they differ from broad spectrum antibiotics? So narrow spectrum antibiotics are more targeted and that means they have less of a potential to affect other bacteria. So I consider the, the other bacteria to be more like collateral damage. So for instance, if we're treating acne and we're using an antibiotic and part of the way antibiotics work is that they they are antibiotic, they kill the C. acnes or Cutibacterium acnes, but they're also anti-inflammatory. So they, they kill that particular bacteria, but they can also have an effect on other bacteria, for instance, in the gut or other, other areas. So if we use a more narrow spectrum antibiotic, it's more targeted and we affect other bacteria to a lesser extent. And that's important because we can potentially um, minimize side effects from having other bacteria involved. And we can also potentially decrease the development of, of resistant organisms if when we have a more narrow, more focused target. And what is the mechanism of action for narrow spectrum antibiotics? Well, when we look at, first of all, the tetracycline drugs and the like the second, third generation tetracycline drugs, if we think about um, minocycline and doxycycline, um, these drugs actually work by two different mechanisms of action. They are antibiotics, and that means that they kill the Cutibacterium acnes, and they're also anti-inflammatory. And then when we look at the newer of the tetracycline drugs that does have a more narrow spectrum of activity, that's serocycline. And what's interesting about serocycline is that this was an antibiotic that was specifically developed for the treatment of acne. And although it has the same kind of backbone that we see with all the tetracycline drugs, there's a modification to its structure. It actually has a change at the C7 position. And they made this modification um, and it's potentially a more potent inhibitor of uh, bacterial protein synthesis. And um, it's also been able to allow the drug to kind of bypass the development of some bacterial resistance. So we find that, especially with this newer, more targeted tetracycline, serocycline, um, it's more narrow spectrum. It doesn't, tends to be more focused on the gram positive bacteria as opposed to the gram negative bacteria. And we also find that it has a significantly decreased um, propensity for the development of bacterial resistance. So that, that's a good thing. And my next question, you know, we worry about the effect of antibiotics on the uh, skin and gut microbiome. Do you care to comment on that? So we care a lot about the microbiome and it's something that um, we understand that, that there are certain bacteria that live in concert with us and they help us and, and some bacteria are a good thing. And we know we have bacteria that lives on the skin that, that's helpful. We have bacteria that live in the gut that's helpful. And normally we have a very good balance of, uh, of which bacteria are living with us in, in, in our bodies and on our bodies. When we use antibiotics, we can disrupt that natural balance. And we see that, for instance, um, in the gut. So sometimes we'll take an antibiotic for maybe a skin infection or for acne, and we find that it disrupts the balance of, of gut uh, flora. And we can, that can cause us to be prone to, to um, certain infections, uh, C. difficile infection can occur with, with the use of an, almost any oral antibiotic. We can see the development of yeast infections when we use antibiotics. So one of the, the, the upsides of using a more focused or more targeted narrow spectrum antibiotic is that we can minimize the effect to the microbiome, especially in the gut, and potentially see less of a GI side effect and maybe less of a risk of yeast infections by using a more focused antibiotic. So what narrow spectrum or targeted treatment are currently available for acne, you know, and what advantage do they have over broad spectrum antibiotics? 
we have a newer, more focused or narrow spectrum antibiotic for acne, and that's sericycline. And this drug, again, was really developed for the treatment of acne. It's more narrow in its, in its target of, of bacteria. It has potentially much, much less of an effect on the gut. And so by doing, by having less of an effect on the gut flora, we can see less GI side effects and even a potentially less uh, risk of yeast infections. And this was true, this was seen in the clinical trials. So <clears throat> we actually have a lot of advantages by having a more focused, more targeted antibiotic in terms that we, we saw really good efficacy. We saw a good tolerability and we saw that the drug actually kicked in very rapidly in terms of getting the acne under control. So do you have any insights on the clinical efficacy of sericycline and the um, safety data as well? So we studied sericycline in patients who had moderate to severe inflammatory acne. And by inflammatory acne, I mean the papules and the pustules of acne. These patients had only up to two nodules. So it wasn't nodule of cystic acne. It was really the superficial inflammatory acne. And we studied these patients and we looked at the reduction of inflammatory lesions over time. And we also looked to see how well those patients got to clear, almost clear skin over the course of 12 weeks. What's also interesting is we looked at the acne on the chest and we looked at the acne on the back. So these studies were kind of special in the fact that we evaluated facial acne, chest acne, and back acne. And what was interesting about sericycline was we found that this drug actually had a statistically significant um, improvement or efficacy as early as week three, which as an investigator and as a medical dermatologist, I found that really interesting because using an oral antibiotic as monotherapy, I don't usually expect to see results that quickly. I usually tell my patients it can take a number, potentially even of months to really get that acne under control. So we did see statistical significance as early as week three, and that increase continued over the course of the 12 weeks. And after the end of 12 weeks, we saw about a 50% reduction of inflammatory lesions by week 12. We also found that in those patients who came in with moderate or severe acne, about 22% of them actually got to clear or almost clear of their facial acne. But we also found when we looked separately at the chest acne and at the back acne, that these patients also got um, statistically more patients to clear or almost clear for both the chest and the back as compared to the placebo. So, so this is a drug that works well for basically acne on the face as well as on the trunk. Now, we also looked at tolerability and we talk a lot about narrow spectrum, but does that actually pan out? You know, we have these ideas that um, potentially we're gonna see because it has less of a target on the gut, we should see a better tolerability on the, in the gut. And actually that is what we found. We saw a very uh, low incidence of both phototoxicity as well as GI side effects. And another really interesting laboratory study that actually translated into the clinical trial data was when we looked to see whether or not sericycline got into the brain or, or crossed over that blood brain barrier. At least in animal models, we found that whereas minocycline did enter into the brain, sericycline didn't. So with that data, you might expect that if the, if the drug isn't, isn't crossing into the brain, maybe we're going to see less CNS side effects. And when we looked at the clinical trials, that is exactly what we found. In fact, we saw very low levels of CNS side effects. In fact, generally less than that of, of patients who were actually taking just the placebo. So overall, what we found was the drug kicked in quickly, it worked well for facial as well as truncal acne. And the side effects profile that we tend to see with other tetracycline drugs were not necessarily seen with sericycline. And my last question, you know, how are you managing patient expectations with this treatment option? Managing patient expectations is really can be quite a challenge, but it's really important. And what I, I like to do is tell my patients on the very first visit, this is what you can expect. Um, so I think if you set the expectations up front, then they know 
what's realistic and what's not. We're fighting against all the things that our patients read on the internet and see on TV, whether acne can get better overnight. And the truth of the matter is it really doesn't. In real life, we tend to mix and match different drugs. I'll usually find a really good oral antibiotic that I think is um, <clears throat> narrow spectrum that's gonna work well for the treatment of their acne. I'll also put on board a really good topical agent. And I'll tell the patients that we can expect to use this combination therapy for a good three, four, five months. And we're gonna to have to check in because we might not get it exactly right the first time and we might have to modify over time. But I do tell them if they stick with me, I can pretty much guarantee I'm gonna get them to clear or almost clear, but it's gonna take, it's gonna take a number of months. I like to tell my patients, let's take a selfie at baseline. I ask them to take a selfie every several weeks. And when they come in, we look at the pictures together. And that way I can get a better understanding of what their acne journey was like, maybe get a better idea if they're having side effects or, or you know, <laughs> how compliant they're actually being. But when you're on the same page and you take the journey together, I think you can guarantee better, a better outcome.